Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and as promised, I was going to make a video on how to make this so that only the server can do certain code and clients can only do other code. So, in most cases for your games, you're going to have an authoritative server. As we get deeper into networking, I will start explaining ideas such as authoritative servers and peer-to-peer uh, -peer networking and things like that. There's uh, various uh, ways that we do networking that are just standardized, and we do certain ways over other ways uh, for specific reasons. I know that's completely generic and vague, but you'll understand it as we continue on. So, I want to create it so that only the server is able to emit particles. I don't want the clients to be able to uh, emit the particles, just the server. So, let's make it so that this is only the server that's able to emit the particles. Now, uh, you may be starting to think, oh, maybe if I did like uh, RPC mode, other clients, or stuff like that, uh, it would kind of work. But no, this code, this update is running on all servers. Uh, the servers and or the server and the clients. So there's actually a very easy built-in way for us to be able to manipulate this. If you say if network view uh, is mine, you can determine uh, who is able to do this. Now. This does not explicitly say that the server is in control of this. However, the particle system is created at the very beginning of the level. We have it built into the scene. Therefore, since it's built into the scene, the server owns it. it the network view is the server. So if we say network view is mine, that is the server for all objects that are created uh, at the start of the scene. The key is at the start of the scene. We will start to explore how clients can own objects soon enough, but for now, we're going to say that uh, everything created in the scene at start is owned by the server. So by saying, if network view is mine, since this object is only created on the beginning of the server, we know that this is only the server code. Otherwise, we're going to say else, uh, we'll, we'll kind of, I'll just kind of prove a point. I'll copy this and paste it down here but instead of doing the network RPC I'm gonna say uh, debug.log client is not allowed to part particle madness I'm gonna say it on both of these lines or I could just make this an or statement so if you press the spacebar or you press return it says client is not allowed to particle net madness. So let's go back over here to Unity, let it compile, we'll build it, build and run, overwrite my old project, and we will uh, make the window the uh, the host obviously because I want to see that debug message and I can only see that in the editor. So we'll make the editor the client that connects to the host. So we'll play, we'll hit connect, now this client is connected to the host. If I press return, you see that on the client, uh, the host here has emitted the particles. If I press space, the host has emitted particles. Now I'll go to the client, and on the client I'll press return. And guess what it says? It says client is not allowed to particle madness. If I press space, it's gonna say you're gonna see the counter go up. Client is not allowed to particle madness. Now the client cannot send uh, the remote procedure call for the particles. Only the server can. So you can control who can do what. This this is going to start to get us into uh, differentiating clients and servers and uh, who's in charge. And the server should always be in charge. Clients should never be in charge. That's just ridiculous. So uh, as we progress in the next video, we'll go over uh, some debugging messages that we can send over the network uh, that may help us out uh, to, doing, to just testing things. So I will uh, see you in the next tutorial. I hope this helps you out. I hope you start to make cool stuff.